Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 89 and 90. Problem number 89, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. It's a very simple, very straightforward problem. It says that we have three consecutive numbers. We have three consecutive numbers and we are told that their product, product of three consecutive numbers of which g is the greatest one, we have to represent the quantity g as the greatest of the three, their product, the product of three consecutive number, we are told equals five times their sum. The question simply is what is their average? Let's find out, shall we? So first thing first, we have to first represent the three consecutive numbers such that g is the biggest one. If g is the greatest one, there is ug. If g is the greatest one, then the one before that, if, or if you want, if you can start from here, if g is the greatest one, then the one before that must be g minus 1, because they're consecutive numbers. And the one before that one, it's got to be g minus 2. So these are the three numbers represented in terms of the greatest number g. And we are told that their product happens to be 5 times their sum. So if you were to take their product, the product of these three numbers happens to be happens to be five times their sum. So that's what we're going to do. Five times their sum. So it's five plus g plus g minus one plus g minus two. That is their sum. That's the sum of the three numbers. It has to equal this quantity. G times g minus one times g minus two. I put them in the reverse order so that it looks a little bit better. Let's see what we can find here. We have to simplify this thing. We have to collect the like terms. So here we get g, g, and g. So we get 5 times 3g. And then we get minus 1 and a minus 2. Minus 1 and a minus 2 is going to give us minus 3. And that in turn equals this quantity, g minus. With me so far? We see 3g here and we see 3 here. 3 is the common factor. Let's take it out common. So we get 5 times 3. If we take out the common factor of 3, we're left with g here, minus 1. Because you see, 3 times g is going to give us our 3g, and 3 times 1 is going to give us 3, negative 3, 3 times negative 1. And that in turn equals g times g minus 1 times g minus 2. What happens next? Well, we see this quantity that happens to be the same on both sides, the common factor, which is g minus 1. G minus one. If you divide both sides of the equation by g minus one, it's going to go away. And what we end up is, what we end up is, five times three. Five times three, we are told, has to equal g times g minus two. Now, if you wanted to, we could convert this into a lot of headache by treating it as a quadratic equation, which is exactly what it is. It is a quadratic equation because when we open this thing, we're going to get g squared minus two g. And we bring the 15 on that, time, that side and we'll end up with g squared minus 2g minus 15 equals 0. But none of that is necessary here. We don't have to go that route. Just look at it. The visual inspection should tell you that g is 5 and g minus 2, which is 5 minus 2, is the 3. There you go. We just solved it. g must be 5. It has to be 5. That's the only way it's going to work. So the three numbers that we are looking for were... 5 is the g, which is the greatest one. So let's do it on the top. So the three numbers that we're looking for happen to be 5, which is the greatest one, g, and then we'll use 4, and then the 3. And the question was, what is their average? Well, the average of the three consecutive number is the middle one, because they are equally spaced. This is their average. The average of the three numbers that we're looking for happens to be 4. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 90. Oh, I shouldn't have erased the problem. Damn it, I erased the problem. Let's do, let's do 90. I have to rewrite the whole thing because number 90 is very similar. Product of three consecutive numbers of which of which 
S is the smallest. S is the smallest equals eight times their sum. Eight times their sum. You do the problem yourself first. You do it yourself, okay? What are the numbers? What are the numbers? Pause the video and do it yourself. We don't need any of this anymore. I'm going to erase this thing. So, let's get going. So here we have three numbers. Hopefully you pause the video, you solve it yourself. You will, you will find that you will always get more out of it if you solve it yourself first. So here we have three product of three consecutive numbers of which S is the smallest. If S is the smallest, the next one is going to be S plus 1, next one after that is going to be X plus 2, and their product, we are told, equals 8 times their sum, which is simply S plus S plus 1 plus S plus 2. Let's collect the like terms here. We have S and S and S. We have three S's plus 3. It's just like before. 1 and 2. Just like before. We're going to take out the common factor of 3. And we'll end up with 8 times 3 equals S plus 1. And here we have S times S plus 1 times S plus 2. We have a common factor of S plus 1 on both sides. If we divide both sides of the equation by S plus 1, we're going to get rid of this quantity right here. And we end up with 8 times 3. Now this, this requires some thinking. Okay, again, again, if you wanted to, you could convert this into quadratic equation because what we end up here is S times S plus 2 equals 8 times 3, which is 24. So if you wanted to go to the root of quadratic equations, you could if you wanted to, but again, it is not necessary. It will be a waste of time. It will be an overkill. It will be an overkill because it's a very simple scenario that we're dealing with here. We just have to take a couple of seconds to take a look at it. S times S plus 2. So we have one number and another number is 2 more than that. A number times 2 more than that equals 24. 24 is 8 times 3, but how else can we write 24? 24 can also be written as 4 times 6. So 4 times 6 is 8 times 3. And here you have it. S times S plus 2. S must be 4 and S plus 2 must be 6. The smallest number that we're dealing with is 4. We didn't have to, we didn't have to go to the route of quadratic equations the quadratic equations would have told us that if s squared plus 2s minus 24 equals to 0 and we would have factorized it, we would have used the quadratic formula and we would have found that the factors would turn out to be 4 and 6. None of that is necessary here. The answer is 4. The answer is 4. Let's do it on the top. What was the question asking? What are the numbers? Well, we are done. The smallest number is 4. The numbers are 4, 5, and 6. The numbers are 4, 5, and 6. Let's, quite, let's quickly verify it, okay? Let's quickly verify it. So, 4 times 5 times 6. 4 times 5 times 6, that's their, that's their product. And that has to equal 8 times their sum. 4 plus 5 times plus 6, which is going to be 15. So, 8 times 15 has to equal 4 times 5 times 6. Let's quickly verify that it is in fact true. Let's quickly verify, shall we? How are we going to verify? We see 4 here, we see 8 here. Let's divide both sides of the equation by 4. 4 drops out and 8 is going to become 2. I see 15 here and I see 5 here. Let's divide both sides by 5. 5 is going to drop out and 15 is going to become 3. And 2 times 3 is indeed 6. It works. It works. Our work was correct. Bye now.